the early 20th century, in between wars, Kithnos is trying to work out its future. There is intensive mining activity from 1870 to 1940. After 1940, the war and the occupation led the mines to decline and disuse, and forced the inhabitants to turn to agriculture, stock breeding and fishing. A distinctive feature of the landscape of Kithnos is the rubble walls, which show clearly what necessitates their existence on the island. The people of Kithnos toiled hard, with ingenuity and resourcefulness. Stone after stone they built terraces, ramps, the locals call them steps, stone lodges, pens for the stock, cisterns to collect the rainwater in the winter. Endless hours of hard work, but also knowledge. It was in the early 20th century then that the Gumas brothers were born. Nicolos was born on 26th March 1902 and Manolis on 30th July 1917. They had three sisters, Maria, Froso and Flora. They lived in the village of Hora. Nicolos and Manolis never left their island and never married. The other villagers thought them weird. Nicolos had actually lost an eye while working in the mines. They were reserved, lonesome, perhaps a bit odd, but at the same time good-natured, honest, straightforward and with a strong sense of honor. Above all, however, they were the worthiest stonemasons, the stone charmers. They were of short build, round-faced and always with a kind smile. They occupied themselves with their stock, beekeeping and their fields on Kakovolo. That's where they spent most of their time. They left before dawn and returned at dusk, but not always, since they often stayed overnight in their lodges on Kakovolo. Being excellent craftsmen, they elevated stone building to a form of art. With patience and diligence, they didn't only secure the stones, but furnished them with a touch of love and tenderness, thus keeping the Kithnian landscape of Kakovolo alive. They used to say that a sound and well-built wall was one where a knife wedged between the stones would not fall to the ground. They took longer to build, much longer than the average stonemason, often one stone per week, but the result was always impeccable. They never took up building professionally. They only built structures on their own land. Let's take a walk in the Voles. Let's take a walk in the Kakes Voles. Let's walk up to Kakovolo, to the land of Nicolos and Manolis Gumas. This is a superstructure, two rubble walls on top of each other. 
We start from the lower part and see a small upright rock. Next to it, two cut upright stones and the structure that reaches the level of the ground. From then on, there are large, flat, upright stones. These are most of the constituents of rubble wall and all the techniques used. Up to the level of the ground, it's more strongly built. Above the ground, they can afford to rely on upright, flat stones. We can see a shed, expertly built by Nicolos and Manolis Gumas in the corbelling system. The side walls converge as they rise to the ceiling, which is made of large, flat and perfectly fitting slates. Of course, there are mangers and useful alcoves in the pen. see another pen, facing south. The cliff protects it from the northern wind. The weather conditions on Kakovalo are tough even for animals. A second shed is built in a different style. The left wall is terraced and the roof is made of large, heavy slates. The back of the pen is the cliff. It's like a little dragon house. Nicolos and Manolis Gumas didn't care about the prize, as did the great masters of the Renaissance. Michelangelo and Donatello cared about art and artistry. We have headed northwest to the lower threshing floor. We encounter a different technique here. To the north, the threshing floor touches on the mountain slope. 
whereas they built a rubble wall all around so as to create a plateau to make a threshing floor. To the south they built a flight of stairs to climb up from the lodge to the threshing floor. Across and far, the villages of Lutra and Chora. These are the steps to the threshing floor. The Gumas brothers built them in such a way that they would survive forever. We are northwest, in the Voles of Nicolos and Manolis Gumas. This is their threshing floor. Behind it, they built rubble walls and created two empty spaces. When the wind blew from the north, they winnowed and the chaff piled up in the space on the left. When the wind blew from the south, it accumulated in the opposite space. In this way, no chaff was wasted and they could stack it easily. A characteristic feature of the Gumas brothers' threshing floors is that except the upright flat stones that edge them, there is rubble wall all around them, on top of which there are flat stones that create a bench.
the resourcefulness and craftsmanship of Nicolos and Manolis knew no bounds. They even made a stone throne sheltered from the wind, commanding views of the Aegean to rest and ponder. On the side, standing left and right, upright wide rectangular stones. In the back, a rubble wall. Inside, a stone bench. Foliage at the top. All these supplied by Mother Earth. the northwest part, in a complex of lodges, a lodge with its own yard, a pen, a stable and a threshing floor. A balcony overlooking the Aegean Sea, one could say. Across we can see the Isle of Kea and in between the passage of ships to the central and eastern Kiklavi. we can see this upright stone with a hole made in it because all the doors by the Gumas brothers were made of driftwood from the sea which was particularly tough and couldn't be pierced easily by nails so they built them in the stones the upright stone holds the whole structure together a long flat stone on top serves as a lintel all around the yard there are alcoves to store various items and mangers to feed the stock. All of them are made with great craftsmanship and every one of them is of their own making. This is another characteristic of the Gumas brothers. When they didn't approve of all their structures, they made everything from scratch. Εδώ βλέπουμε μια ματζαδούρα που είχαν κάνει γκούμετε έξω από το συγκρότημα των γαλιβάρων και των γελιών και των μαντρών που έχουν στο εισβολή του Κακοβόλου. Further away from the main complex, we can see another example of the exceptional skill of the Gumas brothers in stone building. Little details create a very sound construction.
In one of the sheds, the Gumas brothers exhibit not only their craftsmanship, but also their ability to carry and put in place large, heavy stones. Look at these stones! They placed these eight stones on top of the wall, which are a true work of art. Inside the shed, many useful arc-shaped alcoves and a fireplace in the same shape. Small wooden windows are built on all the walls except the northern one. At the top of the wall, large corbel stones support not only the walls, but also the roof. Made of wooden beams, iron bars from the train tracks of the mine carts, wattle and daub, which might explain why it didn't stand the test of time. They usually built stone roofs. Inside the shed, apart from the large stones that support the yard wall, an even bigger rectangular stone is used as a bench. Look here, they placed these two slates as lintels, one of which protrudes and protects the door from the rain. In the houses and lodges of Kithnos, they used to build a chimney, elevated 80 cm to 1 m above the ground, and placed the trivet under it, with the pot on top and burning wood under it to cook food. The lower part was for storing wood. Here we can see a different technique. It's like a fireplace and chimney, all in one.
alcoves, both inside and outside, built alternately. brothers died at a ripe old age. Nicolos first on 30th December 1995 and then Manolis on 1st March 2006. They passed away but left their craftsmanship behind, thus becoming part of the history and tradition of the island. I don't know if all these techniques are going to be I am not sure whether this craft must be passed down to the people of today. All I know is that the Gumas brothers, who built these things, surrendered their soul to God, but left their spirit back on earth, along with their material constructions, for eternity. Mm -hmm.